The Morton Downey Jr. Show contains adult subject matter and language. Viewer discretion is advised. Tell you what, is it only rock and roll or is it big business? It is super entertainment, right? An elitist cliche or rich white boys who won't let anyone else in just like blacks who control rhythm and blues. Are we segregating our music too? I know it's only rock and roll gang, but it is dividing our culture in some ways. Or is it too late to unite? I don't think so. I say, let the music give the answer. Come on. Scotty, how come my buddy Sam Kinison isn't here with you tonight? Huh? Let me start. Let me let me introduce. I zip it. Uh, let me introduce home base up here for you. We have Stuart Goldman, who is a rock critic. All right? We got Joey Ramon. Joey Ramon from the Ramones. All right? And we've got buddy of mine. Buddy of mine. We got Ace Freely. One of the founders of KISS, all right? Let me start with you, Stuart. Let me start. Then home base, of course. Home base, we got at, uh, I should say at Loudmouth number one, we've got uh, Steve Whitaker and at, uh, my, my buddy Alex Mitchell, all right? Circus of Power. Stewie. Stewie, baby. Rock and roll has always been called the devil's music. You remember that from when you were a kid, oh, yes. right? When Elvis appeared on the Ed Sullivan show, they didn't show him down below the waist, all right? Told not to shoot him down there. Is what we're seeing and hearing today any worse than the 1956 gyration? Yeah, I'll tell you why. Because when Elvis came on, he was original. He started something. You mentioned Bob Dylan before. Elvis Bob Dylan Elvis was original. Black man. Shut up. Back. Uh, this guy, I've seen this guy eight million times. This guy's going to have a day job in five years from now. We're never going to remember hey, listen. him. This, this, is, this is not original. This is just some gimp that crawled, looks like he crawled out of a garbage can. Why? He what does he look like? Play. He doesn't look like a he garbage can. Play. He's a friend they're of mine, pal. Band, there's eight million bands and garages that play just like that. Uh, how, much, how much do you know? All right, now you just made the move on him. How yeah. much do you know about his music? I heard it. I've three chords. How come you told it's our guitar player chords. backstage that we sounded good? Good guitar player. Good guitar. No. I just just do me one favor and tell player. the truth. What was his last here, album? Okay? You remember his last album? I, I never heard of this guy what before. What is his present album? You probably even know one title of one of the songs. I never heard of him. That's because you don't know. Then what how, the come, song you're how come? How come about? you can nail him? Here? How come you can nail him? Yeah. You're I nailing just, him like so many other critics, no. baby. No. Like so many other critics without knowing what the hell is behind. I just heard him. Marry someone like Tipper. Why don't Moore, you right? marry G. Gordon Liddy, pal? You want to make me into a bad guy. I don't want to make you into a bad guy. You make yourself into no, a bad no, guy. No. You're attacking something you don't even know about. No. You've never heard their music. I just heard, heard it. Me. I just heard it. All right. Okay. Now, you've been around rock and roll since you were a kid. I love it. I this is a guy who's been around rock and roll since he was a kid. I think what oh, well, he... he used to sing with the replacements for the Kingston Trio. That's like, uh, you know, it's like, that's like re-singing for a replacement of a urinal, man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, he's knocked you because you got a few, uh, whatever the hell is stuff Well, don't is, you, you think, know. Mort, the skin prejudice is the worst prejudice in the world? Skin prejudice? Yeah. Yeah. Skin prejudice. 
That's like if, if you're putting down a black man or putting down the guy with tattoos because of the way his skin looks. No, I, you're, you're a pretty weird character. To I come don't care if you have tattoos. Like it's just that Wait a so, second. So does the last eight, show you people. were putting us down for our look. Now, no. I don't, maybe I don't dress like I'm out of a Sears catalog or whatever. <laughs> When's the, Stewart, last when's the last Kmart time you washed does your make hair, pal? You got them on. When's, when's the last time you washed your mouth? Hey, Ace. See, look. Let me get to Ace. Wait a second. We're not getting anywhere hey, here. Didn't we I hear this find... stuff in the 60s? Anybody, didn't we hear it 20 can, years ago, 30 you know years what, ago? Man? Go get a haircut. Go wash your hair. In, in L, every day. In L.A.? No, no. But that's what you want to make me. But what I'm saying is... Don't take every, cheap shots at me. We're talking about music. This is Kmart. This is Kmart. You're a dime a dozen, man. I've seen guys like you walking down the street. There's nothing, there's nothing unusual about you. I don't care if you have tattoos or don't. If you want to have that for the rest of your life, good for you. Ace, I used to have stupid Ace, let hair, me come too. To you. God, we're getting nowhere with this. Uh, this guy should have been a dermatologist, not a critic, right? <laughs> let me get to Ace. Ace, let me ask you about it. You started a group called Kiss that created a whole new look yeah. well, not for just rock me, and roll. But, you know, All right, okay. Now, what... What were you trying to do? What were you trying to do? Were you trying to convert rock and roll fans, or were you well, trying you know, to make, create them into satanic uh, cults? Satanic cults and all that had nothing to do with it. We wanted to put on a rock and roll show, not only great music, but we wanted to put out a, put out a visual show that was just as good as the music. All brought about, all brought about by... All brought about not necessarily by a new generation of music, by a new generation of electronics, of lighting, exactly. and everything else. You tied it all in, made it a total entertainment package. I mean, a lot of people think, you know, Kiss are multi, multi, multi millionaires. For the first five or six years of touring, we broke even on the tours because we spent as, as, the amount of money that we made on tickets, we put right back into the show to make the greatest show in rock and roll. Joey, Joey, the Ramones. The Ramones are the, I guess you would say, the fathers of punk. What is the credo behind punk rock? Well, it's, it's, I mean... Love. <laughs> I mean, like, well, well you, all my right. Daughter, Joey, all right, you know, Joey, Joey, my daughter came home from it's, it's, going it's, to it's, dances, it's, it's, right? It's, it's, it's she came home with a bloody lip when she was 13, you know it is? with scratches. It's an, it's an attitude. She did slam it's, you know dancing. You know what it is? It's an attitude. <laughs> it's an attitude, whether it be... Uh, Ramones or uh, or Elvis Presley or Jim Morrison or you know what I mean? It's you know what I mean? It's so it's just it's yeah man. I know look, the guy mean. can't even articulate. <laughs> he can't even talk. My man. daughter came home. My daughter came home. All right, uh, little Kelly came home when she was a kid, 13 years old. She's 22 now. She'd come home with bloody lips and noses, and she had her hair done in checkerboard squares, uh, blue and yellow hair. It was really neat, man. I really dug it. I dug it so much I shaved her bald. If you want. She wanted to lead her class, so she let it Very conceptual, ball. yeah. Uh, was that what that was conceptual? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's talk about politics, all right? Before I do that, I want to go Steve. Steve, where's Steve? Steve, Steve. Okay, there you go, Ben. Right. You guys are the Mr. Cleans of Hard Rock. Yes. Would you like to hassle any of our other guests because of what they do in Hard Rock? No, not at all. I think the, the problem is, is that... A lot of the bands, and these guys already early in earlier show, uh, accept the fact that we're accountable for what we do as bands, and we put out mass music and, and media and everything else, and there has to be an accountability for, for what's going on. And we've seen, we had our first uh, American tour last year. We'd like to give you a t-shirt, Mark. Do you accept this? All right, nice. And, uh, we, we saw... We saw... That's a large... That's a lot, yeah. Where are your cellos lot. in Japan? <laughs> huh? T-shirt companies know what they're doing. <laughs> we saw, too, That's nice. we just saw too many thousands of people this who does not, I hope, this does not, I hope, have Jimmy Baker and Tammy on the back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Ace okay, that's nice. Yeah, I'll wear that. I'll wear that out to California. <laughs> and I'll bring, it, bring one up. You got an extra one? Yes, I'll I bring do. it home to my girlfriend, all right? Okay. To, Lori will get one. Now, okay, you guys like to stay clean. So that means you don't get involved in problems with sex and drugs. No, we're trying to make a difference. Exactly. When we're you're making, a difference, when you're making a difference too. in the statement of your music or in the statement of the way you maintain your own lives. In Both other words, go hand in hand. Uh, huh? Both go hand in hand. You can't live a life on stage and live a life, a normal right. life differently. Okay. You're right. So uh, you, in other words, 
Do not use drugs yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do not do music that uh, professes the use of drugs as a as a great way of Con life. Contrary yeah, to that. The opposite contrary. That, yeah. Do you guys sell big? No, not yet. Not yet. You think good will ever sell? And I don't mean good in, in a in a sense of uh, culturally good, well, see, uh, artistically good. I mean good in. Uh, Mr. Goody Two Shoes. Yeah. Well, we're trying to make a living like Ace and everybody else, but it doesn't matter for us. We're just trying to make a difference. And whether we go, you know, multi platinum, this kiss did starting out, that's not really what our whole purpose is. Who do people have to go to bed with to get records? I'd like to know who Ace went to bed with or who went to bed with Ace to give him a record, all right? We're going to find out. Let's go. ask about politics, all right? Honey, and honey, I love you, and you're looking good. Honey, uh, did you have to go to bed with anyone to get a record contract? Um, if I had to go to bed with anyone to get mm -hmm. where I am now, well, I'd be cleaning get a record contract. toilets. Get a I record don't have contract? a record contract yet. You don't have a record contract? No. Would you like one? Are you making an offer, Mark? <laughs> How many oh, inches of record contract, contract do you want to offer me? Just wait till they get the right thing together. Exactly, and that's, that's what happened. <laughs> All right, but seriously, let me ask you a question. Have you been put upon by anyone who says, uh... Take it off, boy. Take it off, boy. Take it off, boy. You look like you can sing to me. Would you like to, uh, make a record? I just like to try for an average try. I mean, not necessarily a record, but. Yeah, we. Safest sex I know, pal, is fully dressed. Uh -huh. we, you know, the people who make those offers in the business are usually the ones that uh, have no clout whatsoever. Usually, people who can't get you any place. Well, people can get you places, but on an integrity level. I mean, I don't think we have to resort to such tactics. We're not into. Does it go on, honey? It probably does, but not in the circle that we know. We, you know, we like want to put the knee pads away for women in this industry. Yeah. Where's Jesse? Where's Jesse? I want to talk to. I want to talk to Jesse Nash. Is Jesse around here, any place? Jesse, stick with us. Jesse, come here, second babe. Come here, mouth. Yeah. Come here, music mouth. Oh, no. Is the business? Is zip it? Is the business of rock and roll still a dirty business in the sense of these guys trying to get themselves a record deal or get something going for themselves? Let's put it this way. I think that anybody who's in this industry has got to draw their line of morals. And when I say that, it means you have to stick to what you believe in. Nobody's ever going to get any further by going to bed with somebody. If anything, the mystery is gone especially when it comes to, from a woman's point of view. The point, the point is, is you got to stick to what you believe is in. Is it a dirty business? It is a dirty business. Is it so dirtier is it. than it ever was? It's no dirtier than any other business. It's all a right. corporation. And, uh, all right, then let me, go to, let me go to Ace. Did you have to make any compromises uh, to get you ahead? Or, or who did you have to kiss, huh, Ace? What, are you serious? <laughs> Ace, Ace, baby. I mean, let's face it, all right? Yeah, I'm not homosexual, uh, and the most... The I didn't say homosexual. Aren't there some women who run record companies? Yes! Huh? No. Mega Force <laughs> Records no, run by a woman. There, there's, there's some women who run well, record not companies, not the people huh? that I dealt with when, I, when it came to me. You didn't have to do anything wrong, huh? Well, uh, I signed... My last contract I signed with Johnny Z from Mega Force Records, and, you know... All, all right! All right. Johnny Z... Johnny Z is looked upon as one of the clean guys. You must have run into some dirty ones All before. I had to do was have a tuna fish sandwich with him. <laughs> no, 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 seriously. Johnny Z, you get big bonuses, huh? I don't even pay royalties. <laughs> well, that's no different than most record companies. <laughs> the way it is. Huh? Nothing, nothing different about that. No, but I, I, I would assume that if uh, a female might have to do that. I might have to go to bed? I was never approached by that. No. Listen, there's the art of more, temptation. Why is this the guy of... even talking? He knows nothing about the business. I've, I watched the other show. So he's a waste, man. He's a nobody. Well, are we gonna are we gonna reduce? Oh, no. <laughs> we got this bum out. Oh, this is circus Maximus. Oh, 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 oh,
nothing yet. And they're all like, on. Wait, people I mean, are busting their buns to make it. We got nobody's on his show. These are people giving their life to the sir, business. I, sir, I gather you don't, don't call me sir, man. Well, I don't know sorry, even what you are. Evidently, don't address me. Don't touch each other. Go on down and touch me. Evidently, if I'm a nobody, then, then you're a nobody because you're putting me in the same level please, as you do. Please. Listen, we're adults here. We're adults here. Why don't we sit there and talk like adults? What's the matter? You intimidated? Talk to me like adults. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Words of you? You do off your tongue? You had a big mouth to me out in the hall there. You asked me who I was. You're just a whim. That's it. You're afraid to speak. When your time is, you've got it in your corner. All right. You mind if I belt them? Let him talk. 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 Go ahead, Z. Go ahead, Z. Talk now. Talk. I'm not going to have a shouting match with you. I'm not having a shouting match. I'm talking to you, baby. The thing is this. I don't even know how you got on the show. I'll be hey, honest. You know something? I, I write. Ace, Ace, come here. I write. Ace, Ace. You've, been, you've done more interviews than anybody in the world, including God, okay? Yeah. Did you ever hear of this bum? Yeah. Her brains. The bum. <laughs> The bottom line is, I write, I write about acts that are happening right now. For who? The woman's right, wedge sit journal? Down. Sit down with me, Jess. Excuse me. Did you, you want to get into that? I sell That's why you have sell a million records a year. What do you sell? Did you read the Red Magazine? Sell millions. Sell millions. Sell millions. Sell millions. Sell millions. Tell you what. We're going to find out if rock and roll has become even more racist. I want to hear from you. Mr. Z, I want to hear from you, baby, all right? Yeah. Stay with And incidentally, incidentally, the hottest heavy metal record company in the United States is run by a woman, isn't it? Now, what company is that? You don't know? There she Mega there's, Force there's, there's Mega Force Rangers. Mega Force Rangers. Now, let me, but let me go, let me go, if you will, to you, Johnny, Johnny Z. Uh-oh. Oh. All right. For years, MTV wouldn't play metal, punk, or black music. Now they play Ooh. metal and punk, but very little black. Why? I think uh, they don't photograph as well. That was a joke. That was a joke. Joke. And this, uh, uh, let me hear you, Johnny Z. Everything is basically uh, dictated by cash registers. I remember in uh, 1983 trying to get a heavy metal band signed at a record company, and I used to see A and R guys standing like this. They couldn't even take the records off that I was putting on. The only thing a record company hears is the jingle jangle of the machine. And whatever's hot, whatever the cash dictates, that's what they're involved with. Just to well, answer your question exactly. Scotty, you got to come in here it's with me, babe. Payola. Let me introduce that's Scotty in, all right? Scott, of course, is with, was with Anthrax. Yeah. Scotty. Why? Why, babe? Why is heavy metal all white? Uh... It's hard to say, you know. It, Same reason it, maybe that our rhythm and blues is almost all black? It, it's, it's a lot has to do with peer pressure. You know, growing up when you're a teenager, when you start listening to music, and, you know, you're 12, 13 years old, and you just get in with a crowd. And Generally, I guess white kids have always listened to rock and roll and, and now heavy metal. And, and uh, it's the same uh, with rap music, I think. You know, black teenagers are growing up with kids who are also listening to rap music. Well, at least you're so. getting white kids doing rap music. You're not getting black kids doing heavy metal. You know, you can't. You don't dance to heavy metal. Living color. <laughs> you're, you're going on tour. Anthrax going on tour pretty soon. They're going to do a pretty interesting experiment. There, your opening act is uh, Colors, isn't it over there? Living Color. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which, which, which is a black group. Stewart, where's Stewart? Stewart, 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 Stewart. Stewart, you're out there. I want to ask you as a rock critic. <laughs> Why is the music so divided along racial lines? Has it been this way historically? Uh, first of all, the idea that blacks are segregated against is, is uh, absurd. 
uh, I mean, in, in one sense, the real black guys like Sonny Boy Williamson and Furry Lewis and the guys who started. Real I mean, black guys, the other guys, guys, guys the guys who, the, yeah, the guys who started, I mean, rock and rollers are always falling all over themselves paying homage to blacks. But the fact is, is that all the blues players in uh, Louisiana that started this stuff are still broke and still living in, in little shacks. And so the whole idea that, uh, you know, that, that now blacks are equal is, is garbage. Wait a minute, whose fault is that? Is it our fault that they're well, living in shacks? Well, maybe it is, considering it's, you ripped off their four chords, maybe you should give them a little bit. Tell me you can play as good as you and then we'll talk about it, right? Oh, and what about record. one of the and biggest selling Sonny groups Boy in America is Public Enemy. Do you see well, he says, put on an Anthrax record and listen to a Sonny Boy Williams influence. You got it, buddy. Right. Is it that? Where? Where's Where? the royalties, man? Huh? Where I'm, saying, royalties? I'm saying you won't hear it. I'm saying well, I defy you to hear it. Almost every riff they ever played off you those guys, people. They didn't get, did they give them a cent? No. We're not talking about Led Zeppelin. We're talking about Led Zeppelin. You're talking about Apple's and Well, you ripped off Led Zeppelin, man. Did we? No, not you. Ace. Oh, okay. I was a member of the Kiss <laughs> Army when I was 12, you man. I know what it's Kiss about. Army? Why were you a member of the Kiss one? Army? Because I was 12 years old. It's 14 years later. You didn't know any better. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but now I do. Where's Queen no. Vixen? Hey, hey, hey. Where's Queen Vixen? Queen Vixen, Kill come me. on up here a second, will you please? I want to see the Queen a <laughs> Take this, you nice lady, and let me ask you a question. Not only are blacks excluded, I think there are only about three white groups in heavy metal who are women, aren't there? Yeah. And you're one of them. Well, we're one of them. We're not signed, though. There's Vixen, there's Femme Fatale. Girl School. Girl School. Girl School is a good <laughs> female heavy metal band. And none of them can play. How come? Just like How come? You. I mean, what the hell's going on? What? None no, of them no female can play an instrument. Go back Just to, like none you. of them go can play. To Boys Town, eh? You what guys you need to go man? back and learn how to play guitar. You can't even play. Like the nerd squad. <laughs> these are these are queen queen. These are critics. These are the critics? people. These are the right. people who decide tools. what is good music. <laughs> they decide what's good. You guys that's why we have a job have and you're no not signed. No idea what's going on. No idea. You're you think, way too old. You think maybe, you think maybe they're still in the, still in the, uh, you know, Herman's Hermit generation? Yeah, what is this? Kingston Trio, right? When was the last time anybody here put on what's a Kingston on? Trio album, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, give me Circus of Power. Wrong. I want that. That's okay. Any day. Any day. Look. All right. I'll tell you what. I still want to find out exactly what goes on behind the producer's doors. Who's laying down on the job? Let's do that next. Let's see, let's see for just a second if I can get inside Ace's head. Ace, uh, you're on the road, all right? Rock and roll stars are accused of trash in hotels, nightclubs, everything else, all right? Yeah. Give me your best on the road story. Well, you know, there's probably now, a dozen. give it to me, don't I don't know, man. There's a dozen good ones. You know, a lot of rock stars get bad raps. You know, you're on the road three, four, five weeks in event, uh, at, at one point in time. And you don't have a chance to see your family, see your friends, you know, and you get frustrated, you know. The night before, I was supposed to do a big concert in Chicago. My favorite guitar, my guitar already dropped, the neck cracked in half. You know, I would... Oh, oh, come on. Oh, oh, let me hear a story, man. Oh, let me hear a story. What'd you do? What'd you do? Drop your pencil and break your lead, baby? Hey, hey. Let me hear a story. So what did I do? You know, I, I, I got back to the hotel room, you know. I, I had a couple of beers. Next thing I know, a TV was flying out the window. What's well, those things that? happen? I mean, you know, I got to tell you, here's other before things. Before I threw the TV, I made sure nobody was down there. All right, I went, <laughs> I worked for a joint. Years ago when I was on the road, I worked for a joint that gave me a $4,000 bum check. Yeah. All right? You get back, you need that money to get to the next spot, sure. to pay your band. You don't have any money. I got back to the room. 
So I threw the television set through the wall. I trashed the bed. I did some things to the, you know, I did about $15,000 worth of damage. So when you hear the stories, when you hear the stories about how rock and roll stars are dumping stuff out the window of the Plaza Hotel, you got to know some of the stories that went on before where they got treated like maybe dirt when they walked through the lobby. like that unprovoked. <laughs> how about, how about, See, how about... The, that's the thing, though. I mean, they, you know, rock stars thrive on this bad... I'll talk to you after the show in the parking lot. Okay. These rock stars... Let's, let's, hear from the, let's hear from the Dave Clark Five. <laughs> all in one, all in one. These rock stars thrive on the bad boy image. Um, this wonderful lady here, bad girl image. Uh, wonderful circus. lady here. Right away you had to touch your bare arm, right? Circus, <laughs> did I? I With your know. scabby hand. Hello, <laughs> Circus of power. I mean, they're hot. They're good. I like them. They got, they got great ink, too. I, mean, I dig your ink. But, um, you, like you, you, see, you see, you thrive on this bad boy image. And you guys are signed to RCA. You know, you were with major labels for years. Man, we are what we are. But you're, oh. but you're being sucked up by corporate America. So what do you stand for? What's well, wrong with what corporate America? What is wrong with corporate America? Well, tell me. signed as they are. Listen, you, but you, you, you have hair and guys. Let me, let me ask. Better. Wait a second. Let me ask. Let me ask. Wait a second. Sit for a second. Sit for a second, you fat jerk. Sit for Let's get into your heads. Let's get into your heads for just a minute. Have any of you thought of doing anything for the homeless, for instance? We have a song on uh, on our album, State. We have a song on our album, State of Euphoria, called "Who Cares Wins," and the whole all the lyrics are about the homeless problem in New York City. Are you oh, donating wonderful. any of that money to the homeless? We have no oh. idea how to. How to they work have to make it. more money. Your money to the homeless. If you're gonna write about it, then stand behind someone, it. Someone, hey, hey if shut someone, up! If I'm someone, talking. if someone, shut would up! Shut up! Shut up! Just tell him, hey, zip it. Hey, shut up! Hey, <laughs> if someone would come to us, we've said numerous times we'd be involved. We we did stuff for the American Indians. The homeless problem in New York, we're right behind it. Someone come to us. Some of us where? Where do we donate the royalties? Is your publisher hey, donating second, some of his bottom line profit? Some, I write for many publications. Some do. What Which publications? Ones? Name the ones that do. Name one. Name one. Name one. He says some do, but he has to ask. Huh? I want to know what magazines you've written for. The issue is not who I've written for. The issue. Are you? I'm the IRS. Well, What's <laughs> that matter? One publication. Name one. That name I write one. for? Yeah. Who are you? I've written for Billboard. I've written for the New York Post. When? 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 Recently. Recently. Oh. That's not the issue here. You're throwing the. You guys can't answer the question, so you're throwing it back in my face. Well, the bottom line is, do you donate any of your profits to the homeless? The issue is the homeless. You oh. say you write about it. Hold you're on. so committed. Hold I'm not finished yet. Oh. You say oh. that you write about it. You say that you're committed to the cause. Right. Committing is putting your pocketbook to your big mouth. Right. Now, 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 now wait. Go we have an answer. I haven't heard an answer yet. I haven't heard. I'm Shut not going to. Up. I'm talking okay. to him. Whoa. Oh. I'm talking to him. What is that? You can't give me an answer. Shut up and let me talk. Shut up let him answer. Where? 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 He's talking. Let him talk. Let him talk. Let him talk. Go ahead. Let him talk. Let him talk. Let him talk, Johnny Z. Now. On August 5th, we did a benefit show at the Ritz for the Megaforce 5th anniversary party. It wasn't donated to the homeless, homeless, but all the money was donated to the Cancer Foundation, Diabetes Foundation. about things. I've written for the Musicians Assistance Program, yeah, which, help, which helps the musicians, our very I own. In this, audience, in this audience, I see people from Circus Magazine, people from Crank, all national publications. How come nobody knows who you are? Hey, you know something? You just haven't been reading the right publications, my friend. I'll be right back in just a second with the audience. Come on. We're going to get the audience down. Anytime you guys want to start coming down to the loudmouth, you go ahead and do it. But I want to tell you, 
regardless of the fact that we got a lot of guys here now who will tell you that, yeah, in the old days they experimented with drugs, hey, use drugs and everything else. Now they claim they don't, that they're fighting to keep people from using drugs. That's good. But, Mr. Goldman, give me a little incantation of some of the people here's who died. A, here's a litany of the lifestyle of these guys are so proud of. Andy Gibb died of cocaine use. Jimi Hendrix yeah, suffocated on his own vomit. Janis Joplin, heroin overdose. Frankie Lyman, heroin overdose. Richard Manuel hung himself. Robbie McIntosh, heroin overdose. Pig pen, cirrhosis of the liver, excessive drinking. Gene Vincent, bleeding ulcer from alcohol. I could go on and on. This is the last yeah, you, you just proud You just covered 22 years of rock and roll. And you only name me about eight people. No, that sounds like a cross-section of America. No, no. There are people from every single kind of career you can think There's of. There's 85 people, people on the list. And I'm not, saying, I'm not saying you don't have some snowheads and everything else, all right, in rock and roll. I bet you got some working at Chrysler Corporation, too. No doubt. You know. So what do we do? Do we condemn the, do we condemn the whole damn business? No, no. No, we don't. It's a business Nobody like anybody else's business in America. Come on up here, man. I this think is it's Tony a business. You know, He's a musician. I think so. it's a business just like any other business in America, and I think it's it's corrupt. Whoa. And I th I think that people play dirty pool, and I think people well, do what they have say, to do. When you say corrupt, I'm a musician right, from New when you York. Say I mean, corrupt. I'm in the middle of the city. All right, when you it. say corrupt, when you talk about let's say a major American corporation being corrupt, you're usually talking about the management. You're not talking about the guy on the auto workers line, right. all right? So who are we talking about here? It's a corrupt business. Are we talking about the musician? Or are we talking about the guy who runs the business who makes it possible for you to make a buck? Well, what's music about? I mean, what's it about? Is it about selling style? Oh, man, or don't fashion? become esoteric for I'm me. Not Tell me. Esoteric. No, that's a real question. I mean, that's a real point of view. Music has become a zoo of style and fashion. And, and always guys was. Like, it always, always was. was. Like it was, you man. The See, now the corporations are behind it. I remember, I can tell you, I remember when old gold like cigarettes that. came out in dancing packs, you know. Look, I mean, that's 30 years ago. It was no different yeah, than the didn't today. have every bozo on the street running around with some stupid haircut. I mean, what all these called out from under the rug and got into the music. I gotta tell you. Music should be about making oh. music. What's the point you're trying to make? The point is I'm trying to make is that everybody crawled out from under the rug and got into the music business. Well, now it's like it's like a zoo. It's Everybody's like a zoo. A it's not like it was yeah, in but the you 60s keep, or the you early keep 70s. Ragging, you keep ragging about everyone who has oh, long hair, all right? No, no. If I had Jesus Christ here right hey. now, you'd want to crucify no, him again. Yeah. We're absolutely right. Yeah. I'm just saying, people are getting signed on how long their hair is. What's that all about? What group has been signed on how I, long their hair is. There, is. there are advertisements in Musicians Magazine that says, hey, I'm in a band, man, I have long hair. And those are the guys that get the calls. You know, the, it's, it's so basically... grow your it's, hair, it's, man! It's, he's, he's not a musician, pal. He's not a musician like you are, buddy. You're a real musician. I used to have yeah, stupid hair. I think hair. so. Yeah, I think so. I, I'll put myself up against anybody. I, I, think, I, think, I think you're a guitar right. player. Hey, Ace. Right. Who's talking to you, man? I think, you know, there, you're a human being before you're a musician. And there are things that the music that you're playing is about. It's about your life experience. It's about what you're about as a human being. And that's the most important thing. That's the most important thing in music. I'm an entertainer. Isn't it? I'm an entertainer or a musician. So what's more important, money or music? To me? What's more important? I like to pay the rent. I like to be... I like, I like to do to, that, too. Yeah, I, like I also to like to... You want curly you're very person? fortunate. You're very fortunate <laughs> I like, I that you are person. where you're at. Because there's <laughs> a lot of people out here... Yeah, yeah. No, you serious. look nice. You look hey, beautiful. Look. You know the sad yeah. part about it. You know the sad... Too serious. You know, you know, you know what happens? Serious. I've been playing the sad part about it. Wait a second, guys. The sad part about it is the system grinds us down into reality. We start off at 21, 22, 25 playing the music man because we dig it because we love it yeah, because it gives a message and then all of a sudden we have to pay the rent and we have to buy diapers for the kid and we need a car for the wife to take the kid to school now That's and we right. need one for ourselves and we get trapped as every generation has before into earning Absolutely. a living what's wrong with earning a living there's nothing wrong with earning a living there's nothing wrong with with making money and, and I mean it's very it's it's American to make money uh, it's yeah. human it's, it's human. human. It's everyone, human. Everyone wants to make money, right? It's just now, that what they're saying. It's nice so when you make the money right. 
you do what you want to do like and he I'm does. Happy doing and what use I do. some of the happy. money to help other people. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Without the government taking it from you. Don't let the government tell you who to help. You decide who to help yourself, all right? Let me, let me go to the... Go ahead, sir. Yeah, you're saying also donate money. I think that it might be enough just to, like Scott Ian of Anthrax says, he writes songs to raise people's social consciousness. Yeah. So if you don't donate money, at least that's something. I think that's something. All right, yeah, for. do anything right, with your something. talent. Exactly. Do something with your talent donating. other than other than pave your own bed. Exactly, because if you donate right. your talent, that in turn is donating money. So if you don't donate any money, you donate your talent. That's something, man. So don't diss us. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Mort, Mort, walk, huh? Mort, only in this country, God bless America, can people dress the way they want, say what they want, yeah. speak the way they want. If this was... If this was Iran now, with the Ayatollah Khatamemi, or if this was the Soviet Union now, three quarters of the people in here tonight would be in jail. But not in this country. All right. God bless the well, you say, All the way. Am I right? Yeah. You say, see, he says, only in this country can you dress as you want, right? Baloney man knows I'm wearing a jacket now. I don't like jackets, but they told me I have to wear them. So don't believe it. You gotta wear them, you know. Ace, you're the theater. Go ahead. Go ahead. No ties. I got that loose. <laughs> Go, man. There's been a lot said tonight. I haven't heard one thing about fans. We're the ones who wait online in the pouring rain. We're the ones who buy the records. We're the ones who call the radio stations. We're the ones who write the letters to the fan clubs. Not one of you without, said anything about us. Like what about us? That's because these people are. What about us? Yeah, more, I just want to say, you know, we have a bunch of critics over here. I work at a local hard rock radio station, and we see what's coming in. We see what's new. These people don't jump on a bandwagon until two years after the band's made it big. You have talented bands like Circus of Power, talented bands like the Cycle Sluts from Hell here, bands that you people do not support until they've already proven themselves. Who are you? You sit back in an ivory tower, you write about it. How about a little bit of originality in it? You can sit here and you can criticize them and say they're jumping on a bandwagon. You don't know what I'm you're talking about. I'm not a writer. About. I'm a musician, buddy. I was buddy. talking to him right, right. behind you, okay? Yeah, you got somebody like John Zazul over here who signed King's I wrote X. about Tracy That's Chapman wrong. before she was any, but I've written about Maniacs. Let me tell you something. You're, you're, you're picking the wrong oh. argument here. You you're picking the wrong All right. argument here. All right. All right. That's right. Jesse, take uh, a walk, pal. Me, go ahead. Let me go to this, this gentleman right here. Go ahead, pal. Um, a few minutes ago, someone passed a remark about Public Enemy. Yeah. Okay, now, how come uh, they can make albums about racial hatred, kill the white people, and in the minute someone like Patti Smith does the Easter album, passes a racial remark... They never said that. Public Enemy right never off. said that. They, they, they have, did so! Did you buy the record? Did you listen to so! it? I have it right from my brother's <laughs> tape. I listened to it in this car. <laughs> all they talk about is black supremacy like all the rest of these bums. They go around like Sharpton and all the rest of them saying, oh, we are the superior race and everything. I listen to the music. Yeah, they got it. The I know. You got to shut up, all right? Because they're all prejudiced. They're all bums. Yeah. Public enemy. All they say is that it's time, you know, black people, they get a, a yeah. bum deal in this country, and they're black, and they're just saying that, but, hey, hey, for white people, yeah, but why can't, okay, but why is a white person, how come you can come out and say that white people, how come you can say white people? We're the fans, we're the one that buy the records, we have the ultimate decision. Now, if we want to support rock groups, let us support them. They're the best ly lyricists that there are today. You should yeah, hear some of these lyrics. Ain't the racial, you know, no color barrier, whatever. Oh, what they do? I'm black and I love heavy metal. Shut your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> All right, tell you what, we're coming back with some rock and roll! <laughs> All right. 
tell you what, no matter, sir, you were at the loud mouth. You wanted to say something? Uh, nothing? You want to say something? Go ahead. I just wanted to say um, that a lot of the writers here tonight sound like they don't like music. If they don't like music, why are they writing about it? I write about all kinds of music, metal, new wave, dance music. Yeah, but see what they do and, is and they I write I like them. it. I enjoy it. I mean... They dig lyrics, these guys. Yeah. Their own lyrics. Yeah. They don't hear the music yeah. that people hum. I mean, you're in this because you like to do it. I mean, as a writer, you don't make a lot of money. You do you're a writer? Because you want, yeah. Do you enjoy it? Yes, I love it. You like it. heavy metal? Yeah, I love heavy metal. All right, I'll tell you. I'll give you heavy metal. I'll give you my buddy Alex. I'll give you the circus of power. Alex, you ready to go, baby? Then let's rock and roll is here to stay. Don't try and shove it away, baby. Go. So did everybody still breathe the freedom of thought? Rising sun. Oh, I love you, baby, because you are the one. Oh, let's go down and get us some action. So, my little baby, give me satisfaction. I wish I was dead from the space of time. Eagle cries out, you the God in the sky. Oh, baby, can't you hear the call of the wild? The call of the wild. She's calling out to another velvet night. I guess I'm on a veil for the city of life. I'm gonna take you out of your mind. Oh, baby, can't you hear the call of the wild? The call of the wild. I don't know what to do. I ain't heard from you about 16 days. Oh man, I got no news. Tomorrow night at 7. An ancient Japanese curse haunts an American family. Beware of The House Where Evil Dwells, the 50 Prime movie. Now, Fred's TV viewing habits make a few fuses overheat. Sanford and Son is next on 50.
in the morning, I'm on that gap. I'm out for one or two. The more I drink, the more I play, the more I fall. Mm -hmm. You're out of my face and you took my eyes. Move my brain, move it all down. Oh, down the line. Oh, I said, let her know tomorrow what you know. Oh, yeah.